Hello everyone, it's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group and youarethebroker.com helping you to build a highly effective and highly profitable broker business. So after sending out that email about how Uber is going to be taking over the ambulatory transportation market, finally, finally I think it's starting to wake a lot of you guys up because Dan and Don, Charlie said that our emails were blown up after sending that video. So our email got blown up with a lot of questions, a lot of comments, a lot of appreciation. I'm sure there's some haters in there, don't know. Uh, but they said our emails were blown up, which is awesome because I've been telling you this for, since well into the last year, since what, late, late summer, early fall, that if you are heavy ambulatory, you're, you're you're done. Your business is going to be, you know, decimated by the the technologies of the world, the ride shares of the world. Um, and if you're one of these guys that's a, a fixed paratransit guy, the jitneys, all these things are being transitioned, and you guys are being phased out. So I'm, I've been trying to sound the alarm, but finally, after having that news clip where they actually talked about it, and Uber's talking about it with Uber Health. A lot of people are starting to wake up, but that's just the beginning. I got so much more. I got so much more knowledge to to share with you guys. So much more info and insight. Because uh, again, I, I've I, I've been blessed to work with so many different people around the country that I'm connected with so many different uh, venues of information that are just awesome. So it's an exclusive opportunity that I have access to that is just awesome. So what I want to do now is share a quick two minute uh, video where it's talking about Lyft and how Lyft is going to start uh, eradicating the ambulatory sector and even some of the emergency, uh, the EMS, the ambulance work as well. So watch this bit short video clip, it's about two minutes and then we're gonna come back and just this little two minute video, man I could write doctoral dissertations on this because there's so many key points. So on the back end of this video we'll come back because I have a couple of keynotes I took down here. And again, I try to make this abbreviated because I could go on and on just about this two minute video clip. So I'll see you on the other side. Well, new tonight, a local organization has teamed up with Lyft to offer free rides to its Medicaid patients. News for us, Dave Graber has details on this. Dave? Well, Jackie, currently up and running is a one of a kind program, still in its infancy, that's using ride sharing services to take people to and from their medical appointments. The Greater Buffalo United Accountable Care Organization is teaming up with other medical providers in Erie County and Lyft, and they say it could save them millions of dollars. A 30 to 60 day pilot program is underway to help transport patients during the hours that are typically not covered by traditional medical transport. The idea is to cut in half for their patients the nearly $2 million spent every quarter on emergency room visits and especially those using ambulances. Lyft would also drive patients to preventative medical visits, which doctors say would save more money in the long run. Now, Lyft basically would pick up a patient and a patient would then call their care coordinator which contacts the doctor which then would authorize the lift meaning patients really don't need an app just to get a ride. Uh, Gubaco is uh, actually financing this pilot program themselves and they say that it will still save them millions of dollars in the end. Also Senator Tim Kennedy who helped to create this partnership said this is a perfect example of why the state needed ride sharing. Avoiding the ER by way of ambulances. It's not, it's sort of managing patients in the right place at the right time with the right people. And I think that's, that, that's what this model will do. We recognize that there was going to be new opportunities, not just what we saw as a new and trendy way to move around the community with ride sharing services, but that it would open up business opportunities and, quite frankly, healthcare opportunities in this case. Now, the program is expected to be reevaluated after about two months and currently serves more than 10,000 patients in Jubaco. Dr. Vasquez estimates about 30% of those patients will be able to use Lyft to get them to and from their appointments, all at no cost. Reporting live in the newsroom, Dave Graber, News 4 at 6. Again, I'm going to try to keep this you know, quick and short, but I wrote some key points just from that two-minute video clip. That video clip is painfully painfully revealing in so many ways. First and foremost, did you hear that woman in the very beginning talking about free rides? Free rides, did you hear yourself, sister? Man, there ain't no such thing as free. 
Where do you come up? You sound like one of these politicians out there offering the free education and the free this and the free. There's no such thing as free sister. Trust, and again, I can go on and on about that, but there's no such thing as free ride. Someone's paying for it. But again, it's a great stra it's a great strategy of what the Ubers and the Lyfts and the slash technologies of the world are doing. I love it. So they're able to pawn off and sell this as free. Trust me, it ain't free, and we'll talk more about that. But um, notice how they said that the free rides are starting out. And again, I'm gonna stress the word starting, but you notice how they try to portray it as this service is going to be offered when typical uh, medical transportation is not provided, i.e. during off-peak hours. Okay, look, do you really think it's going to start and end there? Come on, man, don't be naive. Are you crazy? That's just the point of entry. It's just like in the NEMT industry. If you study my material, notice I always said one of the key areas where you could penetrate your market is through the ER door i.e. after hours, in the, in the midnight hours, when a lot of them don't want to work, that's a great area, that's a great point of entry to you getting market share fast. I mean, that's what I did, it's what a lot of people do, it's awesome. So notice, key point where they say, free, okay, okay, all right, Bernie Sanders, you're right, there's free, okay, so they're gonna offer free transportation, which it's not free, and it's going to be offered at times when they don't have typical medical transportation. <laughs> no, no, trust me, that is just their entry point, I promise you. Um, another key point, notice how the doctor, the state senator in that video, the news anchor, they all drop the hint of emergency services. Now, for the longest time I've been talking about how the Ubers, the Lyfts, slash technologies of the world are going to completely cannibalize and eat up all your ambulatory transports. It's gonna happen. And they're going to, because they could do it cheaper. You can't do it as cheap as they could do it. Their technology is a lot faster than what you can do. The capacity is a lot infinitely greater than what you can do because they're doing it at a smaller price point. They're not, they're doing it in such a way that guess what? They don't have the, they're not gonna ever have to carry the insurance and regulation that you're gonna to have to. So you can't compete. They're driving down the cost. So it's no longer profitable for you. And again, I'll talk more about that in, in a second. But here's what's awesome. They talked about the emergency services. And it's true because ambulance companies are going to lose market share. Now, is there ever gonna be a replacement of emergency services, EMS, EMTs by the Ubers and the Lyft? No, there's never gonna be a replacement. Just like they're never gonna truly replace all NEMT services. That's why NEMT services have to be heavily wheelchair and stretcher based. Um, but, you, you know as well as I know all the hypochondriacs of the world that, man, they just start hyperventilating and they have to call an ambulance. Well, no. What they're doing, and, and Uber Health is doing this big time. They're targeting this as well. Trust me, I got more videos to share that will further illustrate these points. But bottom line is the Ubers and the Lyfts, bottom line is they have an infinitely greater capacity than all these ambulance services. So technically, what their arguments are, the response time is faster. So for all these hypochondriacs, and my wife, she's a doctor, so trust me, I see a lot of this stuff, especially when she's on call and I overhear all these phone calls and these people who have a hangnail and they have to be rushed to the ER because they have a hangnail or just nonsensical nonsense. Ambulance companies, ALS, BLS, love it because if you you have a hangnail, call an ambulance and boom, cha-ching, they just made three grand. Guess what? All you ALS, BLS, you're gonna be losing a lot of that stuff because they're gonna be riding with the Lyfts and the Ubers because their response time is faster, which is definitely, definitely gonna cut into your business if you're ALS and BLS. It's fact, you're never gonna be replaced, so have safety and security in that, but you're gonna lose market share. I promise you that, trust me, it's already, it's already up on the drawing boards for Uber and Lyft, I promise you. So here's, here's part of what's awesome about that is that the, the, the ambulance, the, the, the EMS lobbyists, that is a, people don't understand how big that is. One of the biggest fighting forces against NEMT has been the lobbyists from the ambulance companies, the, EM, the emergency uh, EMS lobbyists, huge, very powerful. But they have been absolutely bullying NEMT industry for so long, and now the comeuppance are coming. 
because they're going to lose market share off of something as simple as an average guy with his phone and an app getting in his car and it's going to Im impact the ALS and BLS industry as well which that I'm not going to complain about because they're going to get what they deserve because it's, it's time for them to get their comeuppance because they've been browbeating a lot of the NEMT uh, industry for a long time like a redheaded stepchild but um, another, another key point that state senator, man, I want to slap the taste out of his mouth. It, I mean, I'm trying to be a better Christian, but man, when I hear insanity like this from that state senator talking about new, it's good, this is going to open up new business opportunities, no. Man, stop listening to that Bernie Sanders nonsense of the free this and the free Stop. Where that state senator's talking about this is going to open up new business opportunities. That, what? What? You think that the average person who has a cell phone and an app gets in his car and goes and drives for Uber and Lyft, they, seriously, that state senator equates that with business opportunity. It's not. Okay, a business is something of value and worth that you can scale and grow. You, you as an Uber driver, a Lyft driver, you can't scale that. You can't grow that, trust me. There's a, plenty of people out there. I know there's some people watching this they are gonna be upset with me, I know. Send all your hate mails, don't worry. I don't even read them. So I don't read the hate stuff, sorry. So, uh, but you're gonna be upset with me because you're driving as an Uber and a Lyft and you got your own business. No, you don't. I love you. Trust me, I love you. I love all you independent contractors. You are hard workers, you're admirable, you get up, you work hard, you work long hours, love you, love you, love you. I'm not bashing you, but what I'm trying to say and explain is you don't have a business. So when that stupid state state, uh, state senator says, we're opening up business opportunities, no you're not, you're just opening up independent job opportunities for these people. As an Uber and a Lyft driver, you don't get up today, you gonna make money? No, you're not. You got something you're gonna sell? No, because if you, you stop driving, your business shut overnight. So no, you're not opening up business opportunities, Mr. State Senator, you're not. Again, in your infinite wisdom as a state senator, go back and live off the government dole for the rest of your life. You're gonna get your retirement check, don't worry about it, we'll pay for it. It's free, it's free for you. Unbelievable. Bottom line is this, here's what's awesome. When I, I keep saying Uber and Lyft, I'm really saying technology. Okay, so when you hear me say the Ubers and the Lyfts of the world, I'm saying technology. Technology is completely running the end, end run game around, they're running around the Medicaid brokers. I love this. Here's what's awesome. Again, the Medicaid brokers have been cozying up to the Ubers and the Lyft and vice versa for several years now. In fact, even like in California, big lawsuits out there in California where Logisticare was partnering with the the Ubers and the Lyfts, they weren't doing it right, people weren't properly insured, logistic care is getting sued, all that kind of stuff. Big stuff, right? But here's the deal, here's what's awesome. The Uber, the Lyfts, the technologies of the world, they are completely running the end game, the end run game around the Medicaid brokers, the, the, the actual drivers themselves. Okay, think about this. Let's talk about the Medicaid brokers real quick. So the Medicaid brokers, when did Medicaid brokers just blow up exponentially? Obamacare. Obamacare came in, exploded the Medicaid system by 133%. Who were the winners in that? The Medicaid brokers. That's why they started to populate and they started to just breed like rats. There's so many more brokers now, big and small, all over the place because they came in, they smelled the blood in the water, they were like sharks in the water, they had the feeding frenzy with the, the, the freebie stuff from Obamacare, they exploded, they blew up. Now, you have, it was awesome, so now you have all these states' budgets just blowing up, blowing up, getting, I mean, just deep in the, in the red, can't afford, it's not sustainable anymore, all this free government giveaways, welfare state, Medicaid stuff. Awesome. The awesomeness of technology is that the Ubers and the Lyfts recognize that and that's their key selling point. They're going to, so when they say free, no, there ain't no such thing as free, but they're going to the governments and they're going to all the HMOs and the ACAs and all these healthcare organizations and they're having, a, and there's, trust me, this is very much, you're not going to see a whole lot of videos about this, but it's very much in the, the uh, discussion and the exploratory phases where not only are the Ubers and the Lyfts, one of the key selling points is they're gonna come in and reduce the state budgets of how much they have to contribute to the Medicaid system. And they're also going to encourage multi-payment. State pays some of it, HMOs, ACAs, all these, org all these organizations, they all serve a, a contributing role to pay for it. That's where they get the free from. So they're gonna tell people if you're on Medicaid, it's free. 
With Medicaid, here's what Medicaid brokers started doing. This is how so many states had deregulation. The Medicaid brokers were coming in and to be more competitive with each other, they were out, not only underbidding each other at the state level, they were underbidding each other, but they were bidding out that they will take on en enhanced services, i.e. That's why so many states started to deregulate a lot of their uh, fleet management because the brokers came out and said, okay, we will, to be more competitive and to beat out the other broker, not only are we gonna beat them on price, but we'll, over, we'll also take on some of the fleet management uh, responsibilities. So what now, the technology aspect is coming on, the technology is going to take over a lot of that fleet management responsibilities and it's gonna be automated. Trust me, the best is yet to come. So the Ubers, the Lyfts, the technology companies of the world, the ride shares, they're coming in, they're staying the, staying the state governments. Trust me, we're driving your costs down, regulation down, oversight down, all the telematics, fleetmatics, all, all that stuff, it's, it's all inclusive. So it's they're coming in and just totally selling, selling, selling that guess what? That, that, this is exactly where everyone's able to say free to the end user, i.e. the Medicaid customer, the person on the street. There ain't no free, trust me. Um, but so here it is, for the longest time, the Medicaid brokers were partnered with the Ubers, the Lyfts, the ride shares. And again, the technology has been running the end run game around them. The brokers right now are in an absolute frenzy because the ambulatory portion of their work was a huge market share for them. Huge market share for them. So they're very concerned, I can, I can assure you of that. The other thing, and I've mentioned this several times over, how many times do we see these, um, it's like the state senator said, the open up business opportunities. Yeah, right, okay. But so for that average person, guy, girl, whatever, who has the phone, the app, and they get in their car and they go drive for Uber and Lyft and they mm, get up every day and they have longevity, or so they think. No, you don't. Because here it is, not only is the technology, the Ubers and the Lyfts of the world, absolutely going behind the Medicaid brokers to undermine the heck out of them. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos. If you're an Uber driver, you got a shelf life. You're done. By 2025, Uber plans to have all of their US-based cars driverless. Yes, it's true, it's gonna happen. And by the year 2030, worldwide, they want all their cars driverless. So if you think that you have longevity, if you think like the state center says that you have a business, as an Uber or a Lyft driver. No, you don't. You're an independent operator. And again, I love you, but I'm trying to explain to you, you don't have a viable business. You can't scale that. Get up to, don't get up tomorrow, stay in bed. In fact, do it for the next week. See how much money you make. You're not gonna make money, i.e. you don't have a business. It's not scalable, it's not sustainable. Your life force, i.e. the Ubers and the Lyfts of the world are working to replace you. So, if you are, now what is good, and I, I do love this, I do love, one of the best things I love about the Ubers and the Lyfts of the world, I love the technology, and I love that the technology is absolutely and systematically sh shattering and undermining all of these rules and regulations by all these states. Why do you think that the taxi industry is still hanging on by a thread right now? Because so many of these stupid state senators, like you saw in that video, are getting paid off by their lobbyists left and right, completely paid off, completely. Man, especially like when I go down to the tri-state area, down towards the city, man, there is so much crooked, underhanded stuff. And trust me, it's all, in all these big cities, I've seen it in Chicago, oh, I've seen it all over the country. Just paid off, stupid, you just, you just want to smack the snot out of them, smack the taste out of them. Again, man, these guys make it hard for me to be a good Christian. But anyways, again, I could go on and on and write doctoral dissertations about this stuff because it's crazy. It's phenomenal. My point is this. If you've been watching my stuff for any given time, for any point in time, you'll notice one thing. I've been absolutely consistent in my messaging. And now, as we progress further, I'm gonna put more and more and more evidence in front of you. So if you, again, if you hear me now, but you choose not to believe me now, I promise you, you're gonna believe me later. I'm, I hope it's not, you're not gonna wait to believe me when you're out of business or you've endured a great loss uh, of market share, whether you're ALS or BLS or, uh, whether you're just a heavily based ambulatory NEMT business. Again, if you are a heavily 
based and EMT business. Sell your business now. In fact, just stop watching this video right now and go start listing your business and sell it because guess what? It's not three years from now, all you're gonna be able to do is sell it for scraps. I promise you, in three years from now, in 2021, 2022, it's not gonna be viable. It's not gonna be sustainable. So many of these metro areas are not only are they experimenting with, but they are already integrating driverless technologies. That's why all these fixed route, paratransit, Jitney, all these drivers, they're not going to have regular jobs. I'm sorry to tell you this. It, when you look at all this, this, this rideshare stuff, oh, they're right now they're just experimenting at the off peak hours. No, they're not. No, they're. Not. I can assure you. I know people who work for Uber. I know people who work for Lyft. I know people who work for the Medicaid brokers. Trust me. These are just entry points. They are inch entry points. So if you are continuing to just bury your head in the sand like an ostrich thinking that everything is just going to pass you by, I promise you are going to be influenced and affected. Again, I will encourage you. If you have not checked us out at youarethebroker.com, I encourage you, if you want to make real money that has sustainability where you're leveraging technology, you have absolute built-in profit margin where you get paid first as the broker, I encourage you, visit us at youarethebroker.com because when you do, I'm going to see you at the top.